Hey Beamer Tech crew, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade this standard analog OEM instrument cluster to a nicer, more upgraded digital instrument cluster. It comes straight from BMW, known as a 6WB. Here's a list of tools that we recommend for the job. The installation itself is pretty similar for all 3 Series and 4 Series vehicles with similar dashboard configurations. If you're interested in ordering a cluster just like this, make sure to check out the links in the description and get in touch with us. Turning it around, you can see it comes just as you'd expect. It's made from the factory and looks great. Looking forward to showing you guys how to put this in. Depending on your vehicle's chassis style, we may or may not send you guys a fiber optic cable that's necessary to connect the 6WB to your vehicle's head unit. And again, contingent upon what type of chassis style your car has, the type of fiber optic cable we send you may be one of two options. One cable that has two connectors and another that has three. One great thing about this installation that I really like is that the old analog instrument cluster has its limitations, as opposed to the 6WB where I get a more personalized driving experience. When you switch between sport, comfort, or eco mode, the cluster will end up coming alive, and I'll show you that once it's installed. So to get things rolling, the first thing we want to do is remove the negative terminal on your battery. It's something you want to keep in mind whenever you're working on any electrical components on your vehicle. Go ahead and grab yourself a 10 millimeter deep socket. We're gonna loosen the terminal and then carefully pull it off. Once that's done, you're gonna to wanna to grab a shop rag and tie it onto the trunk latch so you don't lock yourself out of the trunk. That is, unless you're comfortable climbing through the back seat to reconnect your battery later. So moving right into the interior, let's get started with the trim removal tool on this trim piece. Once loosened, it'll wiggle out pretty simply. Let's start on the passenger side, just under this piece of trim. Apply some pressure, lifting it gently, and it should pop out. Once it's popped out enough, you can simply use your hands to pull out carefully. Now that we have this trim piece off, we'll remove these two connections here. One is for the caution lights and the other is for the climate control. All you need to do is pinch it with your fingers and pull it out. And one thing to remember, anytime you're disconnecting any kind of wires or cables, keep in mind the existing way that the cable was dressed in from the factory, because you're going to have to do the same thing when you put everything back together. Now let's move on to this trim panel down here that has an LED light. Just pry with your pry tool and it will pop out easily. There's a little clip here, you simply need to lift with one finger and push it out to the right. Now with this lighting panel removed, we'll set it somewhere safe. Here are the T20 screws. I'll zoom the camera in so you can see exactly where they're located. Quick pro tip, anytime using a drill, set the brake setting to a low number. We don't want to strip any screws when we have to put them back in. With the screws loose, just grab the control panel with your hands and pull it out. There's a cable here you simply just have to pull out to disconnect. Piece of cake, just set this control panel aside out of the way. Then we're going to grab a microfiber cloth to protect our surface from the head unit once we remove these two screws. Again, these are Torx 20 screws. Put the two screws aside and carefully pull out the head unit on top of the cloth. Next, we'll remove the old analog cluster. To give us a little more room to work, let's drop the steering wheel lower. Next, there are two screws here that hold the cluster in place. Again, it's Torx 20 screws. I find a right angle screwdriver or ratchet wrench works really well for this application.
With the screws removed, now we're ready to remove the old cluster. It's pretty simple. You can see here my fingernail can just catch the lip and pull it down. Then you'll have to push the cluster up and towards you to get over the ledges that are on the bottom. On the right side of the cluster, you'll see here, the wiring harness is latched around a couple hooks that keep it in place. You can see where the hooks are that keep the cable from getting pinched when you put it back in. Once that's loose, you can press this little tab that holds the connector in. And for those of you out there, unfortunately, like some people in my family who have banana hands, this is where you're gonna grab the precision pick tool to press the tab in. So set that aside, and I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna feed the fiber optic cable. There's a path behind the cluster and another path just above the head unit. Some of you may be comfortable using some type of metal wire and some electrical tape to actually tape the cable and feed it through. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to do it if you don't have anything. Something I wanna let you guys know, whenever you're working with fiber optic cables, you wanna be careful on how you're handling it. So if you happen to bend the cable too much at a certain angle, you can actually snap the fiber optic line inside, in which case you'd have to get it replaced. So be gentle and careful when handling the cable. On the quad lock harness, you can see this is where the fiber optic cable actually connects. It matches the connector perfectly, and we want to make sure when we connect it that we are gentle when we're pushing it in. It's pretty easy and should snap in. Just take note, there's a flat side, and then there's another side of the connector that has a corner shaved off. Just match it and push it in. Once you have it connected, I recommend doing a dry fit with all the cabling behind and sliding the head unit in and seeing how it feels. If you get any kind of resistance, just double check and make sure it's going to fit perfectly. There's a chance you may have to pull back on some of the slack of the fiber cable once you're sliding the head unit back in. With the dry fit in place, let's take the other end of the fiber optic cable and connect the new cluster. With a new cluster in hand, we're gonna work in reverse as the old cluster. Carefully dropping it in and turning it sideways so we can connect both wires. On the new digital cluster, there are two connection points. The one on the left for the fiber optic and the one on the right for the wiring harness. Before we connect the fiber optic cable, I'm gonna pull back on the slack and have it rest underneath the air vents. When connecting the fiber optic line, just be sure that the locking tab is facing to the right. Now we'll move on to the wiring harness. The wiring harness will plug in just like the OEM cluster with the lock tab facing up. With the last connection made, we're going to go ahead and put the cluster in. Just like the standard analog cluster, this has ledges that you have to rest the cluster on. Grabbing the two screws you set aside, go ahead and tighten your cluster down. With the excess fiber optic cable, we're going to create a small loop to tuck underneath the air vents. With the head unit in place, we'll grab the two screws and secure it properly. With the head unit secured properly, now we can put the control panel back in place. Grab the control cable, making sure that it's seating properly and press it into place. With that done, now we can go ahead and put the screws back onto the control panel. Let's grab our lighting panel and put that in place as well. Simply slide the LED facing down into the clip. Snapping it in, now we can put the panel back into place by simply applying some pressure. Now we'll grab our ventilation dashboard panel and plug everything in and push it into place. When you plug in the connectors, make sure you follow the same way it was dressed in originally. This way you have no problems when you're pushing the dashboard panel into place. You should hear it all snap into place and work your way over to the passenger side. Uncover your trunk latch
Go ahead and reconnect your battery. And that's all there is to it. It's crucial to follow up with a remote coding session immediately after the installation of the cluster, as it won't work correctly until it is coded. The coding session is included in the price of the retrofit, so make sure to schedule a session with our tech to complete the coding session. You can check out the link in the description for more details about the process. It's time for a look at the new cluster. It's sharp and super crisp. I love the new facelift that this cluster has gotten. Especially when you're switching in between different modes, it definitely gives you a more in-depth driving experience. If you'd like to see more of the features and functions that this cluster offers, click on the link of the video in the description below. And that about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to connect with us, look us up on social media. And be sure to check out the links in the description to see more from our blogs. It's a good way to stay posted on deals we have coming up and stay up to date on what we're working on. And if you'd like us to help you or you're local in Orlando, come down and pay us a visit or go on our website and find the nearest certified Beamer Tech installation specialist near you. And more from us here at Beamer Tech where we can help you get your BMW perfected. Once again, guys, my name is Chaz. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video. If you happen to have any questions, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to see the latest videos that we got here at the shop. See you next time.